<laughs> good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, that's good. That's great. Let's do that again because that was so good to hear all your voices. Good morning, church. Good morning. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 It is a good and wonderful day to be here with all of you. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, my friends, my name is Angelo. I serve as the pastor here at Wrightsboro United Methodist Church, and I am just delighted to be in worship with you today. I do have a few announcements for us this morning as we get started. Y'all, we've got a lot going on in the life of our church, and that's always a good and wonderful thing. We've got a lot missionally going on in the life of our church. And when I talked to my district superintendent about what kind of church I really wanted to, to go to, I said, I want to go to a church that has just such a heart for mission, such a heart for mission. Well, my DS is Dina White, or was Dina White. Many of you know her as Dina McFarland. Um, this is her church growing up, and she told me, well, I have the perfect church for you, and she was very instrumental in getting me here to Wrightsboro. So y'all have such a heart for mission, and we have um, so many missional things going on I want to tell you about. The first is next Sunday, next Sunday, um, July 25th, we're going to have something called Christmas in July, all right? It's going to be fun. We're going to have the church decorated a little bit for Christmas. We're going to sing some Christmas carols and in, in Christmas hymns um, in church that morning, and we're doing it. To, to, to get some supplies for our big Christmas extravaganza that we do each and every year. All right, so this happens in December, and it's a time where people in need in our community can come to our church and go shopping for Christmas presents for free. All right, so we want to make sure that we have the, the items, the supplies that we need to pull that off, because due to the pandemic, we're a little behind in bringing that in. So if, if you have any neighbors, friends, people you know who might want to donate a toy or something to help us with our Christmas extravaganza, let them know about that this week. And I invite you to bring those donations next Sunday for Christmas in July. We're going to have fun. There's going to be some Christmas cookies after church. It's just going to be a great time, and it's going to be for a really, really good cause. So next Sunday, Christmas in July, if you've got an ugly Christmas sweater, pull it out of the attic. Where I might wear mine. It's got a sloth, okay? And that's, that's where I'm going to leave it at, all right? It's got a sloth. But I, I invite y'all to come um, to that. That's next Sunday, Christmas in July. Vacation Bible School is right, yeah, woohoo, right around the corner, friends. From Monday, um, August 11th, or so, August 9th through Wednesday, August 11th, from 6.30 to 8 p.m., we're going to do three nights of VBS, all right? It's train-themed. I think it's called Rocky Railroad. Rocky Railway. It's going to be super fun. If you've got kids, grandkids, neighborhood kids, let them know that we're doing this. There are a lot of families with young children who are looking for things like this to do. And believe it or not, there are many churches who chose not to do a VBS this summer. So there are people who are looking to be involved with VBS. And we've already got kids signing up. That's great. Number one, we've got kids signing up. Everybody go, woo! woo! All right. Number two, we need volunteers to love on these kids. We need volunteers to help shepherd these kids to be present, to help with things like snacks and getting kids in the right places. And so if you're interested in being part of that in any way, you can register your kids here this morning. We've got registration forms. You can take them home. You can find a digital version online, wrightsboroumc.org. And if you're interested in volunteering, which I hope many of you will, will help us out with this, um, you can contact Jill Burns, who's right here, all right? Her information is in the bulletin where you see Vacation Bible School in bold print, and we would love to have you um, help with that. If you're new today, we're so glad to have you with us. We do have a welcome center. Uh, Miss Debbie will be out there after the service, and she'd love to talk to you, get to know you a little bit, and also help you get connected with our church. So if you're new, we want to welcome you. We want to invite you to, to come hang out with us at the Visitor Center immediately after church. And the last thing I want to tell you about is just a simple save the date. The Saturday, um, August 21st, it's the, it's the block party going on. Wrightsboro area churches right out at the elementary school right here up the road. Um, if you got kids in school, grandkids in school, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have lots of fun activities. Lots of school supplies are going to be given out, donated. 
Our church is a part of this. There's all the area churches are a part of this. It's fun. It's going to be super awesome. So just save the date on that. It's going to be Saturday, August 21st. That's the Saturday before school starts from one, uh, from, from 10 to 1, from 10 to 1. And there will be food and all sorts of good things. So it's going to be great. Well, those are the announcements. That's a lot. There's a lot going on. And guess where you can find all this information? In your bulletin. bulletin. And we've got bulletins. Hallelujah. We've got bulletins. We've got music. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. If you're watching online, I always welcome. Welcome online people. If you're watching on Facebook, we're so happy you're here. Make sure you share the service. Like it. It's a great way to get people engaged with our church. We're so happy that you're here. We're going to sing a song called Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Yeah, let's sing. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Y'all sound so good. Come on. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, I do. I want to see you. See you high. To see you high, lifted up, shining. favorite things about this song and how it talks about the faithfulness of God. We're going to spend time talking about that today, God's faithfulness and the way that we can trust God. But this song says, Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. It's a lot easier said than done, but what if we really believe that and acted like it in faith? So I'm going to invite us this morning to not just sing the words we see on the screen, but to really treat this like a prayer of our heart. Let's sing. You call me out. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where the feet may fail.
so clearly here in this place today. 
we thank you so much for blessing us with your presence, for pouring out your Holy Spirit upon us, Father, for you are holy. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord, and you bless us. You bless us with your love. You bless us with your presence, your peace, your comfort, Father, your divine healing and provision. And for that, we are so very thankful. And we will put our trust in you, Father. We will turn our eyes to you. We will look upon your face, Father. For you shine down upon us, and we are so grateful. We thank you for your wonderful love and your mercy. Father, I ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon Pastor Angelo today. I ask you to give him a divine and a special anointing, Father, to bring forth your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Friends, our first scripture this morning comes from Psalm 23. If you'd like to follow along in the Pew Bible, it's on Old Testament page 501. You're also welcome to utilize the screens or any Bible or digital Bible app that you might have. This is Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite us at this time to go ahead and as we are able, stand for our affirmation of faith, number 885 in your hymnal. It'll also be on the screens for us. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith Let us now declare, and we all say together, we believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Y'all may be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite our ushers to um, come forward as we share in the offering. We are passing plates, but please, if you do not feel comfortable grabbing a plate or touching a plate, just let us know, and we'll make sure that 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 gets right past you. There you go. We do have offering boxes 
an offering box outside um, in the narthex, and you're always welcome to give online. And I thank you. I thank you all for your incredible generosity that allows us to be the church that we are. That's possible when we all give together. Thank you.
Let us stand. Bum, 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 bum. Ready? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Y'all are so good. Y'all are so good. Here we go. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks, for we know that every good gift comes from you. And so we offer these, our humble gifts, back unto you, knowing and trusting that you will use them to strengthen and build your kingdom here in this community and around the world. We offer these prayers to you in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Y'all may be seated. I'm going to invite our children, any child who'd like to come up for the children's time today, you are welcome to come forward and hang out with these two wonderful little ones and all the others who come forward. Can I get some fives? Boom, five. Boom, five. Boom, five. Can I get five? Boom, five. Can I get five? Boom, five. Love it. Love it. All right. You know, what's, what's really cool is that there's five of you. So, you know, some providence. Six. Woo. Love it. Y'all come on up. Okay. Can I get some five? It's all good. It's all good, buddy. I have a question. I have a question. I think it's a good question. I don't know. You tell me. Do any of you know what you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a doctor. You want to be a doctor? Oh. Okay, huh? You don't know? That's okay. You want to be a teacher? That's great. Yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. Some, some professions get claps. Uh, <laughs> shrug the shoulders, not sure. You said you got a lot of things, right? You're going just going for everything. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up, buddy? Nothing. You know? That's all good. Yeah? Hunt for alligators, you know, people do that. And one guy in particular made quite a living um, off, of, off of just that, a whole TV show off of just that. You know, it's interesting because one of the things that Pastor Angelo is going to talk about today is what I wanted to be when I grew up. What if I told you that when I was your age, I had no idea that one day I was going to be a pastor? I mean, did anybody want to guess what I wanted to be? when I grew up, when I was your age? A doctor, good, good, a pastor, a football player. I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. Does anybody know what, what those people do? They can fix lots of things. They make crazy adventures. One of the things they do is they work on the space shuttles, right? And the rockets that take the astronauts up into space. And I thought for the longest time that that's what I wanted to do. And I kept praying to God all the time, God, help me see this dream of mine come true. And I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer for the longest time in my life. But do you know what I wanted to be after that? A band director. Do you know what I wanted to be after that? A history teacher. Do you know what I wanted to be after that? A jazz musician. Do you know what I wanted to be after that? A pastor. A pastor. Here's why I wanted to share this funny story with you. It's funny. But the scripture that I'm going to talk about today from the Bible says that we should trust in the Lord with all our heart. And that we shouldn't lean on what we think we know or what we understand, but we should seek God with everything we do, and God will show us the way 
to go. For the longest time, I felt like my life could only have one direction, and if I didn't go exactly that way, if I didn't become an aeronautical engineer, I was going to let everybody down. I was going to let myself down. I wasn't going to see my dream come true. But what this scripture tells me is that no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, as long as I'm following Jesus and seeking God, God will continue to make the path straight for me. And I want you to know that whether you grow up to be exactly what you want to be right now, or whether you go and decide you want to do 5 million things, and then when you're you know, 50, you decide you want to start a whole new career. All of that is okay, as long as we work to follow Jesus with our lives. So last week, I gave you a really simple prayer. Jesus, give me your peace. Today, I want to give you a really simple prayer again. It just goes like this. It says, Jesus, lead me. Jesus, lead me. Can you guys say that with me? Jesus, lead me. If you ever feel like you're in a moment where you're not sure what to do, maybe just take a deep breath and say that prayer to yourself. Jesus, lead me. And see, see what God might do if we just strive to follow God in all of our ways. Okay, I'm going to invite you to put your praying hands together. I'm going to invite you to repeat after me, okay? Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Help me love others the way you love me. Amen. Amen. Now, it wouldn't be children's time if I didn't bribe you for being up here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But I do want to give you a little lollipop. You can take one. If you would like, you already got one, so you got a head start. You're welcome to take one or not, and then you can go and find your parents, grandparents, whoever you're here with. Amen. We got to remember, friends, that our children, they're not just the church tomorrow, they're the church right now. And they're in ministry wherever they are, and so these just little simple truths that we can give them just help to really influence not just their lives, but also the lives of people around them to make the world more a reflection of, of Jesus. Friends, we're going to share in some joys and concerns um, this morning. So are there any joys or concerns that people would like to share this morning? Yes, sir. So good to see you, Miss Joyce. Glad you're back. Awesome. Two great joys for your mom and for Andrew. We give God thanks for that. Yes. Wonderful. Had six kids in Sunday school. That's awesome. We give God thanks for that. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God thanks for that, for good health, for improved health. Thank you. Yes? Safe travels to Melinda. She's going to Florida tomorrow for about three weeks. Yes. Linda Gentoli, right? Yes. Gentoli. Okay, great. I got the last name. Wonderful. Hope she's okay that I just put her on blast online. We love you. Traveling mercies. Yes. All right, praying for Miss Eva, that's right, absolutely. Yes. Okay, thank you. We're praying for your mom. 90 next Saturday. 90 next Saturday. Hallelujah, that's right. Nine o'clock Sunday school, uh, had eight, 18, 19 this morning. That's beautiful. Praise Jesus. Yes, Miss Carolyn. I just want to say special thank you to Vicki's uncle, Ben, from the Methodist Church. He is the one who showed up and picked up my donated bed yesterday. Be careful what you donate. Yeah. It's too heavy for a bus to take care of. Well, 
it got it got taken care of. See, and this is just a wonderful story of how the church is meant to be the church for one another, right? We're meant to, to help one another. And so if you're, in, if you're ever in need of help and you're not sure where to go, don't hesitate to reach out to your church family. All right, we're here. Go for it. Someone received that bed. That's right. And we give God thanks for that. Austin, what you got? Huh? Yeah, he's praying because the move's hard. So, so pray, keep praying for our wonderful family and my kids who have friends. Yes, and they're making more friends here at the church. Any, any unspoken prayers that people just like to raise a hand for? Any unspoken prayers? Amen. We're all in prayer together. Here, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, Lord, we love you. We know that you love us. In this moment, we offer these prayers, the ones that were said aloud and the ones that are silent on our hearts. We know that you hear each and every one of them. So we lay them at your feet. We trust that you are good, that you love us a great deal, that your will for our lives is good. So Lord, we cast our burdens upon you. We cast our worry upon you. We know that you can hold them. Free us from any anxiety or worry that we might be carrying so that we might live in your glorious freedom. For those who are sick in pain, Lord, bring healing. For those who are troubled and confused, Lord, bring direction. For all of us, bring us a confidence of your presence and your grace in our lives. And we pray that in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Our scripture this morning is going to come from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. And I'm going to invite you, if you'd like to grab a pew Bible or just follow along in whatever Bible you have, it's going to be Old Testament page 586. Old Testament page 586. We're also going to have it on the screens. And this is me just wasting time until I get this thing up. I could do it without this. Um, so this morning, I should go get my Bible. <laughs> Can't do it without this. Again, Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. So as you just heard me share with the kids, you know, when I was growing up, I had a lot of different things that I wanted to do with my life. When I was young... You know, I had a lot of family that, was in the, that were in the military, all right? And I had, you know, grandpa and uncles and aunts, you know, in all different branches, Marine Corps, Air Force, Coast Guard, Army, Navy, you name it, I had a family member in it. One of the things that I was always so fascinated by were the planes, and the rockets and the ships. And I always loved seeing the rockets going. I lived in Florida, grew up in Florida. So, you know, if you live in Florida and grow up in Florida, chances are you're going to see a space launch from somewhere, from somewhere, especially if you're on the east coast of Florida. And for the longest time, I thought that what I wanted to do with my life was be an aeronautical engineer. And this was a great calling in my life until I realized just how good you had to be at math <laughs> to be an aeronautical engineer engineer. And not that I was bad at math, but I just, I didn't have the drive to be that good at math, where the slightest, you know, misstep in an equation could be the difference between life and death for someone. And so then I was in high school and I was, you know, kind of a troubled kid growing up, um, had, you know, had a lot of behavioral issues, had, had some stuff going on at home, but I had a band director who came my sophomore year of high school whose attention, you know, for me and whose clear love for his students and a desire to get the best out of his students really helped change in many ways the course and direction of my life. And I saw that band director and I thought to myself, okay, I might not be really good at math or have a desire to be really good at math, but I like music. 
And I love what this man has been able to do, not just in my life, but in the lives of so many. I want to be a band director when I grow up. And I followed that path. I got a scholarship in music to, to go to college. And, and while I was there, I learned that I really liked jazz, and I played a lot of jazz drums. So then I was like, ah, I think I'll be a, a jazz musician. And imagine my mom. And imagine how awesome she must have felt when she saw me go from wanting to be an aeronautical engineer to a jazz musician. Not that, not that you know, that's, that's, that's not a good and, and respected profession. It is. It is if you're, you know, good enough to make it in, and, and make a living with it. But it was interesting because as I was having all these you know, changes. And I was growing up in the military, so we were moving all the time. And so I felt like for so much of my life, there was so much change. But as I was growing up in the church, one of the things I heard a lot about all the time was how God has a plan for your life. And as I kept hearing that teaching, I thought to myself, Hey, God, you ever going to show me what that plan is? Because I'm going back and forth. I feel like I'm, you know, shifting across all these things. It's, it's tough because I, I think I'm going one way, but then I end up going another. And depending on maybe what kind of church you're going to or what kind of preaching you're hearing, sometimes if you get this feeling like you're not on God's path for your life, then you're in some serious trouble. You could be walking down the wrong path. And I wanted to share a verse with you. This is one of those verses that are so well known in the scriptures. Another one of those verses you find on picture frames or on throw pillows or blankets or you name it. It's one of these verses that maybe many of us have memorized from some translation of the Bible because you heard it so much growing up. But this verse had a huge impact on my life and how I came to understand the way God works to direct my life. And what I feel God taught me and is continuing to teach me was something very freeing and beautiful and something that I'd love to share with you this morning. And so, from Proverbs, also known as the Book of Wisdom, the Book of Wisdom, and we're going to get some wisdom this morning. This is Proverbs 3, verses 5 through six. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. Some translations say, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to give you my sermon in a sentence right off the bat. I try to do this just about every week um, because I think it's helpful if you can have exactly what I'm trying to get at, you know, in a way that hopefully you can remember it. And, and this one I can't take credit for. I can't remember exactly who I heard say it. I can't remember the preacher, but I remember this phrase. I can't remember the preacher, but I remember this phrase. If I walk in God's ways, he will lead me according to his will. If I walk in God's ways, he will lead me according to his will. Can we say that together? If I walk in God's ways, he will lead me according to his will. I can't tell you how many times growing up, I was told to trust God with my life. Trust God with my life. Trust God with circumstances in my life. Trust God with outcomes in my life, whether they were good outcomes or bad outcomes, whether I was, you know, in a place where I felt like I was thriving or in a place where I felt like I was struggling. I heard so often to trust God and to trust God's will for my life. Life And I always felt like there was some, like God had a, a map and it had every step of my life 
charted out. And I was meant to walk along that exact path. And should I veer off from it, I would find myself in some place of trouble. And it's not just me. This is like, you know, gone through a, a, a big chunk of Christian teaching and, and Christian life. Even take, for example, the concept of, of finding the one for you, right? You need to find the one, the one, whoever the one is. As if you married someone that wasn't the one, you would just like mess up God's scheme and, and will for your life and for all of creation. And I thought to myself, you know, we talk so much about the will of God oftentimes in church, but we don't ever really talk about it. We talk about it, but we don't talk about it. What does it mean to be people who are called to trust God, especially these days when trust feels so hard to come by? Trust feels, and that's something like I, I ask people, hey, who feels like it's getting harder and harder to trust? And a lot of people feel that way, whether it's getting harder and harder to trust your friends or, or the people you listen to or the, the news that you watch or, you know, the whatever it is that you're reading or wherever it is that you get your information, trust is becoming harder and harder to come by. So when you talk to people about trusting God and following God's will and following God's plan more and more today, that's becoming something that people are having a hard time reconciling and wrestling with. But I was hearing a pastor preach on these verses, and the pastor said, you know, if I walk in God's ways, he will lead me according to his will. And he said this phrase that I'll also never forget. He said, God's will is whatever. God's will is whatever. And the point he made was that the second you decide Start following God with your life. Whatever it is you're doing in that moment and the next moment, that's going to be God's will because you're following God. Remember a few weeks ago I said that true freedom comes through submission to God. And that's true here. Now one of the things I didn't tell you about was that for a really short period, I don't count this, in my long list of things I wanted to do with my life. But for a really short period of time, I wanted to study history and be a history professor. And I've always been fascinated by the history of World War II. If there's a World War II documentary, I'm watching it. If there's a book that's written, if there's a person to study, I'm, I'm checking it. I've always been really fascinated with this time in our world's history. And I came across a pastor in England, in London, named Leslie Weatherhead. Anybody ever heard of this guy? Okay, you're about to. Fantastic individual. Pastor who's preaching. He's preaching as the Nazis are dropping bombs all around England. And he decides that he's going to preach a sermon series on God's will in the midst of that. And that sermon series was actually turned into a book called The Will of God. The Will of God by Leslie Weatherhead. It's a very slim book. You could probably read the thing in a day easily. Or you can just read it like you're listening to his sermons. But the way he nuanced the way God works helped me to, to kind of understand what really matters in terms of following God and trusting God with my heart and with my life. Now remember, he's preaching these sermons while people are losing family members, while people are losing their homes, while their world is looking nothing like it ever did before, while literal bombs are dropping on them. And he talks about the will of God in three different ways. In three different ways. And I think what he does is beautiful, and I want to share it with you. If you're someone who likes to take notes, you can, you know, write these down and Google them later. You can find a whole bunch of stuff on Leslie Weatherhead. But first, he talks about the will of God as intentional, that God has an intentional will. 
And we find this in Scripture right at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God created Eden. And God created perfection. And God desired to be in right relationship with God's creation. And everything was perfect. And everything was beautiful. And that was God's intentional will for creation. To be in that state with God. But in order for that to be true, God gave us something called free will. And the ability to choose to accept that reality or reject it. And you keep reading the Bible and you see that pretty soon humanity rejects that. Rejects that perfect communion, perfect connection with God. And so what Leslie Weatherhead says is that God has a circumstantial will. <clears throat> a will that understands <clears throat> that people in the world that God created have free will and the ability to make their own decisions. So what he said was, all this chaos that's going on around us, this war, this destruction... This is not God's will for the world. I don't, and, and understand how powerful this is as a theological belief. Because there are some who look at tragedy and horror and go, no, that's God's will. But how do you reconcile that with a good and loving God? And what Leslie Weatherhead said was, that's not God's intentional will. God had an intentional will. Out of our free will, we rejected that will. And so there is a circumstantial will where it is not God's desire that there would be war in the world. It is not God's desire that there would be illness and sickness and famine and poverty and hunger. Those things aren't the will of God. God is good. God is loving. God desires relationship with you. And all of these things that happen, God permisses it to happen because we have been given free will. But here's what you can't get out of, and that is God's ultimate will. And this is where Weatherhead finishes this beautiful book of sermons, like literally as the world around him is crumbling. He said, God had an intentional will. We see that in the first few chapters of the Bible. God has a circumstantial will. You see that in the rest of it where people keep rejecting God, but God keeps showing up. God keeps parting the waters. The Hebrew people chose how many times to walk away from God, but God never walked away from them. God never stopped pursuing them. You go to the New Testament and you see, like, they kill Jesus. They put Jesus on a cross, and God says, guess what? I'm going to use that. I'm going to use the very rejection of me in a way to show you that you cannot, you cannot do anything that circumvents the ultimate will of God. And the ultimate will of God you find in the last chapters of the Bible, the last two chapters of the book of Revelation, where God tells us that there is a new heaven and a new earth. And God tells us that there will be no more hurting and no more crying and no more pain and no more war. And that God will wipe the tears from our eyes and that death will be no more. Nothing that happens from point A can mess up God's point B. Nothing. Nothing. So what Weatherhead would say is, could you find yourself living outside of God's will for your life? Absolutely. It's not God's will that your life would be a mess. It's not God's will that your life would be such that, that you would feel that you don't have relationship with God, that you would feel that you have no 
connection to people around you. God does not want you to be miserable. That is not God's will for you. God loves you. God desires for you to be secure and assured of who God is in your life. But how do you get within that beautiful will of God? The book of wisdom tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not to rely on our own understanding, but to acknowledge him. Or another way you could say that is seek him. Seek him and he will make straight your paths. And what I think I love about this passage is that it takes something that maybe we often feel is very complicated and actually simplifies it. That God has a beautiful plan and desire for your life, a plan to prosper you, a plan to, to, to have you live life in such a way where you understand that the Lord is good. And there's no really hard math problem or, you know, crazy map to get there. It's really about a choice, a choice to choose to seek after God, to follow in God's ways of loving God and loving one another and trusting that God will make your paths straight because God is good because God loves you, because God desires that for your life. I find it interesting, and I'll end on this, that I think there's only one place in the whole Bible where God tells us to trust him directly. And even then, like, the translation's a little iffy. Most of the places where you see the word trust in the Bible in relation to God is other people testifying to God's faithfulness and saying, you should trust in that. And so as you find ways to seek God with your heart and as you find ways to trust in this amazing love that God has for you, how might you echo that truth to others? That God is someone who can be trusted. That God is someone who is faithful. We struggle a lot in our world with trust, with what it means to trust. But trust is a choice that we make. And while people in this world, because we're fallen, because we're broken, because people in this world will harm and hurt and break your trust, it's important that we never lose the promise that we have a God that can always be trusted. And if we choose to trust in that God each and every day, each and every day, watch how that increases your capacity for trust in your world. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, seek him and he will make your path straight. If you follow God's ways, he will lead you in his will. Amen? Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite us to stand together as we sing our closing hymn. It's going to be number 140. Great is thy faithful. You'd think we planned this. Right, great is thy faithfulness. It's a wonderful hymn. It's one of my favorites. I love to sing it. This is going to be like my first time really trying to do this on guitar. So, grace. This is, this is going to be the permissive will of God. Okay. <laughs> and now we can make will of God jokes because you understand. All right, here we go. Let's see. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever. 
friends. Indeed, great is the faithfulness and love of God in your life. And now receive this blessing and benediction. Go now from this place in the grace and peace of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to leave the walls of this building and be the church. Go now in peace, my friends. Amen. Amen. Amen.